Hey there, folks. Oh, look. It's this kid again. But with some improvements, in theory. So I've taken a look at this kit um, at least twice now. Uh, we're going to go for number three today, but this is one of Funny Playing's newer um, laminated Game Boy Advance kits. This is the 3.0 IPS kit. Uh, the 3.0 refers to the size of the screen. It's not B3. Stop saying that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the difference between this kit and the ones that I've checked out previously is allegedly this one is finished. Um, it ships with pretty much the same slew of uh, accessories as the previous version. You've got the laminated screen assembly itself, three wires for the OSD, um, the ribbon, which visually is pretty much the same, uh, and a little bit of foam that they intend for you to use to um, press the touch sensor right up against the back of the LCD to give you a little bit better contact. I don't know why they send you this whole big sheet of foam when they just want you to cut off a little bit, um, but we'll take a look. And we've also got this bracket here. Um, I'm still unclear whether these are supposed to be coming with the kits or the shells. Uh, at some point, I will look that up. <laughs> but if you're ordering a kit and a shell, you'll definitely get a bracket. Um, but these backlight kits are designed specifically for their shells. You cannot install these in any other shell, not without a significant amount of very precise trimming. And um, I'll show you more about why that is once we get into the meat of things. Uh, tonight's donor is going to be a Game Boy Advance that is working perfectly and already has one of these kits in it. This specific kit is uh, an older iteration of this exact same kit. Uh, the reason we're going to be swapping this out is because this specific kit does not have the working FRM feature, whereas this one allegedly does. Um, I'm kind of butthurt that Funny Playing decided to ship this thing uh, in a feature incomplete state. Realistically, they should have just never advertised the FRM feature um, and just hidden the menu item until they were done. Uh, and for anyone wondering, Yes, I have a USB-C battery door on here with the wrong kit, the one of the older retro modding USB kits, and the port doesn't line up. So if you're thinking about doing that, it should work with the newer kits. I just, I have a lot of these things, so I use them. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend them, though. Um, you get way better bang for your buck with a pair of nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, in fact, I think these even last longer than most of the battery mods out there anyway, so it seems kind of silly to spend 45 bucks on a battery mod when you can spend $8 on two sets of double A's. But hey, you do you. Again, I already have them, so I'm gonna keep using them, but I don't recommend them. Anyway. Get this torn down. I normally like to use brand new Game Boys for this sort of stuff because I think that sets a little bit better expectations. Um, I feel that most people watching my videos are about to embark on a similar mod themselves, so I like to start with a blank slate. Uh, but in this case, the install is going to be the exact same as the previous iteration, so if you want to see a blank slate, that video is still up. It's not going anywhere. Um, there it is. Same thing, we're going to be skipping some of the power usage testing. It should be identical. The core of the kit is unchanged. Ooh, and you get to see the old bracket compared to the new bracket. All right, so we flip that up, and yep, it's still wired up. Of course it is. I wonder what the easiest way to undo this is going to be. 
I'll just remove the whole assembly. How about that? All right. And before I set that aside, let me just pull this stuff out. So I can flip this over without spilling everything everywhere. So the reason you have to use a funny playing shell specifically for these kits is to do with the cutout. Uh, so you notice uh, the LCD cutout, the entire area is removed. If you look at it from the inside, there's actually a bevel on the inside. Uh, so it's a little bit wider at the top and then it narrows as it reaches the front of the housing. If you look at the screen, you might notice the exact opposite bevel in the glass itself. The entire purpose of that is so that the LCD sits in there just about as perfectly as can be um, it seems to work pretty decently. Uh, the biggest issue, of course, is that the mounting is quite a bit less sturdy than other Game Boys. Uh, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, I don't know that there's much that can be done about it with this style of uh, mount, but... Of course, I forgot to turn on my soldering iron again. There we go. Let's get that attached. And I will save this for something else. I don't know. It's perfectly good. It just doesn't have a working FRM. All right. The display assembly itself should be identical. I could reuse the other one. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just reuse it because this one's nice and new and still has the plastic on it. And this one's already pre mockoed so why not? Uh, but we will be ditching the ribbon. Um, comparing the two, they are identical. Uh, even the version numbers, these are both quote-unquote V1.0. The only difference I see is on the second line, this one's 2245, the new one, whereas the old one's 2230. I don't know if that has any meaning. Uh, it could just be that these are, um, like, it gets a whole panel of these at a time, and this one was in the 45 position, whereas this one was in the 30 position. I don't know. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. So the hardware is 100% identical. The only difference is the software itself. And let's look at the screen brackets. This is the V1.0, the retail version of the screen bracket. Um, it is mostly solid with a big cutout in the middle. Uh, it works. It's fine. I didn't seem to have any problems with it, but they revised it and now it looks something like this. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to offer any improvements. I suppose we'll find out. Um, but if nothing else, it's probably a little bit cheaper to make because there's a lot less material and probably a little bit cheaper to ship in bulk. Um, obviously, shipping one is going to be negligible, but Funny Playing didn't just buy one. They bought probably a few thousand. Um, before we solder up the button controls, let's test it out, make sure it actually works. I have, of course, tested this. But it's a good practice, so let's test it. Okay, get that out of there. And wire that bad boy up. Oh, here's a good use for the phone. Whatever I just did with it. Never mind, I don't know where it went. Just do that, make sure nothing shorts. Uh, 
drives me crazy with these battery mods. The terminals don't always line up. Ta-da! It's working. So, I'm not surprised. I expected it to work. I've tested it before. It works. Uh, but now, I can comfortably solder up to it because I know it works. Um, I'm just going to give a quick visual inspection, make sure there's no areas of the screen that are damaged. Um, I don't expect there to be, especially since I'm reusing the same LCD. But I would do the exact same thing if I was testing the new LCD, which I already did. But I don't know. Nice showing the... I suppose it's nice showing the process for those that are not familiar with it. All right. that disconnected so that I can handle this thing a little bit more freely. And you definitely want to get this stuff soldered up before installing if you want to solder. After testing but before installing because Otherwise, you'll be soldering on top of the LCD, and that is a fantastic way to damage the LCD. Flip this over. Make it a little bit easier. Select to select. That's probably L. Let's do R. Easy peasy. And just like that, the soldering on this kit is optional. Um, you should be able to do everything through the touch sensor, but I don't necessarily like using the touch sensor, so... I don't know, it's just a good way to get fingerprints all over your screen. Also, sometimes it's not as reliable as I want it to be. It's very easy to mistakenly trigger it, that is. Alright. And then assembling this thing kind of sucks because your instinct is to set it down, but as soon as you set it down, the screen's gonna pop out. And if you try and hold it by the screen, I mean, the screen's gonna pop out. Um, oh, we want to, I think I'm gonna fold that this way. Is that a bad idea? I don't think so. Oh, I can't slip that under there. If we do that, it'll be nice and tucked away. How about that? Okay. Anyway. How does this get installed? So this little, it's easy to tell the top from the bottom because the top has three protrusions. We've got top left, middle, and then top right, whereas the bottom only has the two. Um, telling the left from the right, on the other hand, well, that's why we're doing some test fitting. It's probably enough to just look at the shell and see how it aligns. That doesn't look right, so let's flip it over. That looks a lot better. Oh, but it's not fitting because the screen popped out again. Yay! 
Yeah, that seems right. It's probably good enough. Okay. Drop my foam in there to hold the touch sensor down, just like the instructions say. And then I think we're good enough. Good, good to go. Put that over. This wire keeps popping out of place, and it wants to settle right where I can't let it settle. It's going to get pinched. All right, that seems seated. Let's screw it down. And because we're threading metal into plastic, we do not want to over tighten it. I'm going to bring it flush with the motherboard and then back it up a quarter turn. This will help us avoid damaging the screw posts. And it'll still be plenty sturdy. Don't forget your light pipe. kind of weird how it sits in there at an angle. I don't know if it should. I don't know that it's going to necessarily harm anything, but it just makes me think that something is not seated properly. It's probably fine. I just want to quickly double check that my wires are not being pinched. That one seems good. That one is definitely not though. There we go. There we go. That's better. It didn't immediately line up. I pressed it down and it seemed all right, but I'm glad I checked because a wire was getting pinched. All right, because this shell has been assembled before, which means these screw holes are actually threaded, to reinstall my screws, I'm going to Rotate the screwdriver backwards until. No, oh, that one's not a very good example. Uh, usually, um, you can hear a little click as the screw drops into place. 
Um, I didn't hear that click, but I could still feel it. Is that? Eh. These aren't clicking. But if you look close enough, you can see the screw change position just a little bit as it drops into place. There we go. Oh, that one clicked. set. Let's try it out. The terminal is lined up properly this time. So we're good to go. Um, at some point I need to find the proper battery cover for this, but or put it in a different mod, I don't know. But it works. It's good enough for now. Kill the lights so they're not overpowering. And you know what? <laughs> this feels a lot more solid. This new bracket is a significant improvement. I didn't think it would be... I, I didn't think it would change much, admittedly. Uh, but it fits a lot better than this bracket. Oh my god. It, it feels solid, man. There's a little bit of ripple when you press down on the... I mean, as I'm saying this out loud, I realize how ridiculous it sounds. Uh, but you can see that the screen is kind of smooshed down. So when you press on the lens here, it ripples a little bit instead of just moving the whole assembly down. It's just pushing the lens into the LCD. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit sturdier. And then touch sensor is not... Is it centered? I think it's slightly left of center. But one of the new features, again, this is all software, we can use the OSD or we can use the touch sensor. If you press and hold, it pulls up the OSD. Ha <laughs> ha. And then you do short press to change the options. Medium press to move to the next one. and then long press to close it. Or you can use the buttons. Um, hold select L and R to bring it up. Select moves between the options. L and R changes, changes the options. I think the buttons are quite a bit easier to use in the touch sensor for this. Um, and then hold all three again to close it, come on. There we go. Um, and then I think just select and, ooh, Looks like holding select brings that up. I did not know that. Okay. You don't have to hold all three. Good to know. Um, that's actually kind of a bummer because it, you, on the older kit, you could do select and then L to decrease the brightness, select and R to increase the brightness without having to go into the OSD. Now it looks like you have to use the touch sensor to do that or go into the OSD. I don't like that. That's actually kind of a bummer. But the trade-off is probably pretty good. So let's jump straight into worst case scenario. I'm gonna throw Zass in here. And I've discussed this game before, but um, original Game Boy consoles did not have a way of achieving transparency. Just That's just how the system worked. Um, we take a lot of things for granted these days, but back in 1980, late 80s, when the original Game Boy was designed, that just, it wasn't a thing. Uh, so instead, they took advantage of a feature of the LCDs um, where the pixel response was just absolute garbage. So if they flickered a sprite on and off real quick, it would result in a nice smooth transparency effect. Well, this game took it to the next level and the entire background is transparent because there are two or three layers 
Um, at the beginning, there's only two layers. I think it goes up as you progress in the in the game, but don't quote me on that. I don't I don't actually play this game. I only use it for testing. Uh, but anyway, on most backlight kits, this results in horrifying flicker. And you know what? This looks perfect. This is great. Full disclosure, I do already have the feature on. But I see zero issues with this. This is... they fixed it. Oops. Right. Let me pause that now, and then hold up select. Bring the brightness up a little, I think that helps. We'll switch that off, and now you can see it's flickering quite a bit. Oops. And I'll play through a little with that off. And you can see the difference it makes. It's not... It's not significant, but it's enough. Um, personally, I think without it, this specific game is... I don't want to say unplayable because it's obviously very playable, but it's very distracting. It's, it's hard to play, man. But with it on, like it's, it's problem solved. I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna grab the SP version of this kit eventually. Um, I don't have one yet. But I know they did the firmware change so you can operate it with the touch sensor entirely or just one button otherwise uh, so that they could do this on the SP. Because um, on the SP, the kits usually are just soldered up to the brightness button and, and that's it. So this way it gives them a few more options. Um, personally, I don't see the problem in soldering it up to select L and R on the SP2, but since they don't give you the option usually, it's not doable. But anyway, yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Let me let me get another game so we can test out some of the other options. Uh, how about a flash cart? And we'll do 240p test suite. We can take a look at the colors next. And the um, pixel grid modes. Uh, why is it not? Oh, there it is. Cool. So what I want to look at, I don't expect this to be any different, but I want to look at it anyway. Oops. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you know, it's weird. This test does this on some of the other kits, too. That is so fascinating. I'm not... My fingers are nowhere near the touch sensor. I'm not hitting any of the buttons. Interesting. And if I exit out of that, my touch sensor starts working again normally. That's such a fascinating bug. I don't even know how, I don't understand <laughs> anything about how that happens. Um, but anyway, full screen stripes. On the horizontal stripes, um, there's not a single problem. It's nice and even scaling. But on the vertical stripes, it triggers that bug for some reason. Uh, but also you can see the scaling is not even. This is not using integer scaling. So we have, um, come on. We have multiple display options with pixel grid modes. Uh, I don't think, oh wow, now it's really toggling. I don't think any of them really help with that. But you can see what all three of them look like in rapid succession. <laughs> uh, but let me get... Do 
we have the full screen color thing? I forget. I forget what it's called. Solid color screen. How about that? <laughs> anyway. Let me just crank that up. See a little bit better. So we have our display options, which is no pixel grid. Um, I think that changes the scaling. And then we have pixel grid with different scaling. So the difference between one and two on this solid color screen, there isn't one. Um, but if we go to, well, that for example, you can see. Well, no, you can't really see anything. You have to look really close. Um, one, the first display option is very sharp, whereas the second display option is a little bit blurry. Uh, and then the third display option is blurry, but with pixel grid. Uh, so I don't necessarily have a preference for one over the other. I think it's going to be dependent on the game itself. In all of the synthetic tests, I like the display option one a little bit better, but in actual games, I like the display option three best. Uh, I think it, I think it ends up blending the colors a little bit better, uh, uh, but it, it, it depends on the specific game, I guess. Um, if the game is text heavy, the display option one I think is best because the text just looks best with that option. Uh, you see it's nice, clear, sharp, etc. And then if we bring that up again, swap it over the display option two, you can see it gets a little bit blurrier. It's not, like, I'm looking for a difference, so I see one, but if it was set to one thing or the other, I don't think I would be able to tell you, like, oh yeah, this is display option two. You know, like in a blind test, I couldn't tell you which one's which, but I could tell you if I saw both, which one I liked better. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, looks pretty decent, pretty similar to the last one. Oh, let's do the colors. So we still have the same four options. We have the normal colors. Uh, we have an oversaturated mode, black and white, and then the green scale. Um, I really wish they'd change this oversaturated mode to an undersaturated mode instead because, spiel time again, um, the original Game Boy Advance screen kind of sucked. Uh, as I'm sure most of you are aware, um, besides just not having a backlight, the screens themselves were darker. So compared to a Game Boy Color, uh, well, that's a bad example because that one's got some UV damage. What about that? That's eh, not a great example either. Um, well, you'll have to take my word for it. I'm not going to go find another one of these things right now. Um, but the Game Boy Advance screen itself was just a little bit darker uh, than the original Game Boy Color. And with not having a backlight, that makes a significant difference because it means that no matter what the lighting, it's always going to look dark. Um, I don't know what the difference is specifically between the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance screens that caused that issue, but it is what it is. Uh, so to compensate for that, a lot of game developers would intentionally crank up the saturation of the colors in their games so that when displayed on the darker GBA screen, the colors appeared a little bit brighter. Uh, well, when you've got a normal backlit screen in here, like one of these IPS kits, the oversaturation gets cranked up to the next level because these screens can actually display those colors. Uh, so they're displaying the color that the GBA sends, which is already oversaturated, and this screen doesn't have any way to compensate for that. But if you go in here and turn on, oops, turn on the color mode to crank up the saturation even further, it just, it gets, it's a whole new level of not great. Um, I don't, I've been trying to ask for this feature for years at this point and I think I think we're almost there almost there uh what's what's that other game called golden sun uh 
I think it was probably that one. This one is one of the best examples for this specific problem. I don't think it was this game because if it was, it would already have saved data. Uh, but this is one of the best examples of this specific issue because like in the very first level, when you very when you first begin the game, um, even on the title screen, ah, oh, there is no title screen because there's no save data. That makes sense. Um, you can see how green this is. Like this is supposed to be a rainy, overcast scene, and the developers of this game intentionally oversaturated the colors so that when you played it on an original GBA, it looked like a rainy overcast day um but with this type of screen it just looks kind of green and ridiculous uh, of course i do have the saturation bumped up even further but i'm i'm proving a point here darn it uh let's actually swap that before we leave oh no i hit the display not color i'm sorry You can see, both options kind of suck, but color 2, I think, is way worse than color 1. I don't know why anyone would use any of these color options. I don't... I don't know. If there's a good example, let me know. I'd love to hear about it, but I just... I don't see... I don't see it. Leave it on default and leave it alone. Um, display, on the other hand... In this specific game, hmm, that's tough. I don't know. I think I'd go with the uh, display three option again with the pixel grid. On the other kits, I'd normally like the uh, without the pixel grid. I think it results in a much cleaner look. Uh, but with this specific kit anyway, you're not going to get that sharpness out of it. Uh, so I think this helps kind of mask the um, the scaling used. I'm forgetting the name. It's not integer scaling, but it's something like two and a half times scale. Oops. I don't know. I'm not paying attention to this game. But there it is. It's certainly playable, but it just looks kind of ridiculous. I think there are some like retro arch shaders that work really well for this sort of thing. Uh, and I think it works a little bit better on the analog pocket, which I suppose we can look at. Mine's in a partial state of disassembly, but as long as we don't need an L and R, it should still work. Oh, and I still have it set to full screen because of who I am as a person. Right. Yes, yes. Oh, of course it reset. I didn't actually get far enough. So you can still see it's horrendously green. It's horrible, but this is the default display option. We can change it over to original GBA LCD, which on the analog pocket is actually uh, muting the colors a little bit to try and give you a better representation of what the original GBA would look like. And you can see it is much less green. It looks quite a bit better, whereas that was the default. This is what we're trying to work. This is what we're working with on IPS kits, whereas this is what what I want. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get outside. Let's see a little bit better example. You can see that looks overcast and rainy, doesn't it? Compared to that, which is just horrifying bright green. Eh. But the original GBA LCD setting for this specific game is unbeatable.
and I really wish we could get this specific feature on literally anything else. Um, the analog pocket's cool and all, but you know, if you want to buy one, good luck. Right? Oh, that's gone. It's a good console. It's just, you can't get one without paying the scalper price or waiting in a year-long queue. But anyway, I'm good with that. That's a good feature. I like it. Let me grab Pokemon Emerald. And I'll go ahead and pull it up to the same scene that I'm always testing these kits with. Or not. Uh, I think it's time I clean this cart, don't you? Don't you agree? Okay. So yeah, in Pokemon Emerald, 100% scan, uh, scan lines. They're not scan lines. The pixel grid is the way to go. Again, most kits, I really don't like the pixel grid emulation, but on this kit, it looks right. It just, it feels right. I'm still gonna turn it off on everything else, but on this kit, I don't know, feels good. Looks good. I don't have any problems with it. I can't even explain why I feel that way. Oh, that's interesting. I don't actually hate that. Mixing the color and display options. Hmm. Might be useful um, like if you're playing outdoors and you've got the brightness cranked as high as it goes and it's still looking pretty dark, maybe you can use the, uh, the color, color option too to try and compensate, but I can't speak for all of you guys, but I certainly don't normally play outdoors or in direct sunlight, so it's not really a consideration for me, but it is a thing, I guess. I'm digging it though. It's not bad. Not bad at all. I think between this and the 9380 kits, which Funny Playing does not make in laminated, you have to get the older style if you want to grab one of those. Oh, there's my other flash card. Um, I think I'd still go with the 9380 one. But if they added all of the features that this thing has, especially the FRM, frame buffer as, as I assume, it's pretty hard to beat. I don't typically play games that have uh, transparency. Let me actually, let's try Legend of Zelda. Huh? Um, but if I did, God, I don't even know where my flash card, oh. It's still in my Game Boy Color. Um, if I played games that use transparency effects, 100% this kit over any of the other kits. Yes, I know. I'll fix it eventually. There you go. Look at his chain. Nice and solid and transparent. No flicker. Looks great. I'm into it. But most of all, 
I'm glad that Funny Playing finally fixed this. Um, I'm still grumpy that they bothered releasing the kit in the first place with uh, that broken feature, but I'm glad that there's an option now for not having, or for having, that frame buffer feature. Got the cord. Okay. I have to go find my other easy flash that I just dropped. Uh, but otherwise, this is looking pretty darn good. All right. I don't know that there's much else to test on this. Um, compared to the ITA we've got here, we've got the same window size, but better viewing angles and more features like FRM. I guess technically the ITA kit doesn't really need the FRM feature because the pixel response on it is kind of meh. Um, which actually makes it a little bit ideal for this specific use case. Uh, but the viewing angles kind of suck. Um, not, again, not really an issue because how often are you playing your Game Boy at some stupid angle? But, I don't know. Nice having more options. Wherever that touch sensor is, there it is. All right, I think that's about all I can talk about for now. Um, I've of course got plenty more I can talk about, but nothing relevant. So I think I'll leave it for the next one. Uh, I will go ahead and put some links to this stuff in the description if you want to check it out. Um, huge shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to check out. Um, they've been super good to me and They, they, they've been pretty good from what I've heard from uh, other people as well, so I, I certainly like them. I like to support them, and um, I guess I'm a little bit biased because they've been supporting me too, but I don't know. You tell me. Have they been treating you good? Yes? No? Maybe? Um, I will relay any feedback that is reasonable. Um, otherwise I think that's all I've got. Um, make sure to check out the description. There's going to be plenty of links in there, uh, including a link to my site that I maintain, uh, has information on all the tools I'm using, like physical and ROMs and such, um, has links to pat my power usage, spreadsheet, um, the Game Boy Wiki that I help maintain that has information on all of the mods that we know about and uh, like including backlight kits and such for every model, not just Game Boy Advance. Um, good stuff. You're missing out if you're not clicking out, clicking on all the links. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Uh, I'll also throw some links in there to the previous iterations of this kit. Um, the last build I did in this housing and even the prototype that I assembled that doesn't have the finished firmware, no OSD, but still has brightness controls, or I thought it did. I don't know, doesn't matter. I'll play with that later. Um, good stuff. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think.